Thank you for the invite, uh, Mr. Mayur Shah and Mr. Sudarshan Jain. And very good afternoon to all the dignitaries and the business leaders of uh, the Indian pharma industry. Uh, very happy to have the opportunities to share uh, our journey in emerging markets. Um, as Vikrant was saying, I joined Dr. Reddy's about three decades back. A year later, we started to get into emerging markets. A lot of what I will speak is uh, my own learnings and the learnings of the company. Um, this is a safe harbor statement. So uh, Arunava spoke about the better. Right. Is it better? So Arunava spoke about the importance of emerging markets. Um, Dr. Edis has been there for them in emerging markets for the last three decades. They con uh, emerging markets contributes about 20% of Dr. Edis' revenues. Uh, we operate in about 45 markets. All the markets that we operate, we have our direct presence over there. Uh, and we operate uh, in the space of Rx, OTC, institutional, and B2B. Uh, but also, uh, what is critical is the fact that this is a large market. And what is also important is what is your company's aspiration to be in emerging market. So if you take uh, the three big markets of China, Brazil, and Russia, they occupy 70% of the markets in terms of the size. And hence, if your aspiration is to be a billion dollar business in emerging markets, it's essential that you need to play in these uh, large markets. Uh, Aruna also spoke about some of the challenges that you see in emerging markets, which is the significant competition in traditional generics. So many of the companies that have gone into the emerging markets, if you are trying to come now to the emerging markets and try to compete with simple generics, it is going to be tough because not only the competition is from the emerging market companies, including India, but also the local company. So there is a gradual shift in many of these markets in terms of how you want to play by participating in more complex product, differentiated products, or the biosimilars, which then have an opportunity for you to either get a large portion of the institutional business or have the ability to build a brand. Patients in emerging markets are looking for much more holistic solutions. So not just in terms of the pill, but to go beyond the pill. So what's our ability to ensure that we are offering more of a condition management, not just to participate by offering the standard of care for those conditions. I think there is also this element about uh, both currency volatility, the macroeconomics and the geopolitics. So this is something that is constant. So there is always this change that happens in um, emerging markets, where there is a change with respect to how the economies are developing, the change with respect to how the countries are changing the landscape as far as the regulatory is concerned, or what happens in terms of the currency. Uh, the way in which we have tried to address this is to see that you spread your presence across uh, multiple markets so that even if two or three markets are going down uh, for a year or two, it doesn't impact your total business. The second, of course, is to take the hedges. And third is to go and play across the various segments and move the business to much more branded rather than to play on the lower part of the value chain, which will have um, price competition. We have done well in the last couple of years, and the aspiration, of course, is to continue to do well. Um, the way in which we have done well in the last couple of years is what I would say is to participate in the horizon one of the business, which is to participate in the Rx uh, part of the business. Then we graduated to institutions. From the institutions, we started to get into OTC, the B2B, and of course, the biosimilars and oncology. As we think of going forward, another layer of growth that we're adding to the existing layer of growth is to participate in the innovative part of the business, which is to basically try to understand that if you today are in a particular therapeutic area, traditionally, 
we participated by offering the generics, the standard of care. But increasingly, if you see in emerging markets, there's still a lot of unmet needs. Not all that is today innovated in US and Europe is going into the emerging markets and hence, for companies who have presence in emerging markets, there is an opportunity that you can contribute not only to the undermet need, you can also contribute to the unmet need as well by bringing in the innovation, whether the innovation is through innovative product or in the area of uh, consumer health. And that's going to be the journey going forward for us while we will continue to strengthen our presence in Horizon 1, but we build Horizon 2 that is having a higher impact in terms of what we do as an organization, but much more branded and uh, having the ability to continue to see growth for a long period of time. Our journey, if you take in terms of emerging markets in the last three decades, has been how do we build uh, business in cluster of markets? I think Arunama spoke about cluster of markets. We started off by building Russia CIS. Then we started to get into China and Southeast Asia. Then we started to get into the African markets and then subsequently into the Latin American market. So we did not enter all of the markets at the same time. It was all about understanding a group of markets, what are their common needs, how do we play in those markets, how do we build the uh, organic play in those markets, and then to move into the next set of markets. So this has been something that we have been doing on a, on a, on a consistent basis. Our current presence in is about 45 market. There's still a good number of emerging markets where we're not present, but the idea is to see how we will continue to uh, impact uh, the uh, consumers and the patients in all of these markets. As we stand today, Dr. Eddy's not just in emerging markets, but totally, we serve about 600 million patients worldwide. Aspiration, by the time we get to 2030, we want to serve about 1.5 billion patients. A good number of them are in emerging markets, and hence our journey will continue to look for expansion in emerging markets. I think this, um, I was not aware that Arunaba will be presenting these five principles and hence uh, it's not a repetition of those five principles, but there's a lot of similarities of what Arunaba presented, but this has been largely how our journey uh, worked out for us. If you want to play in emerging markets, you need to play it for the long term because of the fact that you will have the ups and downs and it is not a market that is well defined. The, as I said, the regulatory and the market conditions are changing on a constant basis. So it is essential that if you're committed to play in emerging markets, then you need to play for a, for a long haul. Second, I think, is the fact that um, you need to adopt your operating model by understanding the unmet needs of that particular country. You cannot pick up what is working for you in India and try to take that into the markets. I'll give you an example of China, how some of the companies we tried to do that did not succeed in the market. The third, I think, is to play to your strengths. Uh, the example that I will quote over there is uh, Brazil. Uh, Arunava also spoke about the operating model, absolutely essential. Today, there is no emerging market which where you could have a separate orientation in terms of quality of the product as compared to what you do either in US and Europe. So, uh, they, there is no easy market in that sense. Everyone today is asking similar quality of what you, what you today sell in the US and Europe. And how you build the capabilities in these markets decide how you are going to grow and play in this market. And the last, I think, is about a, a building a strong culture, I think. Um, Arunava spoke about winning culture. It is about how do you build local culture that is aligned to the corporate culture, but then it's about how the local people believe in you uh, and how they work within the context of the overall values and behaviors of the organization. So I'll, I'll, I'll use a few, few case studies to demonstrate these five principles. Talking about the long haul. So what you see over here, is what has happened to Russia in the last, let's say, two decades. 
and you'd see that there's no consistency in terms of how the economy grows, right? So you have two, three years, you might have a degrowth, then you have a growth, you have a degrowth, you have a growth. You see how the, uh, the market is performing and you see what is happening to the currency. Uh, you, you, you constantly uh, see that most emerging markets, the currency continues to depreciate against the US dollar or, 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 in, or euro. But I think I want you to look into the lower right hand side part of the, uh, the, the slide. In spite of these changes, the Russian market has grown at 14% over the last two decades. So you'd have two, three years when you need to sustain and you need to manage those markets where you will not be able to grow because of the local conditions. But if you consist continuously play at this, you will be able to do well. I'll just give an example over here. 2008, there was this, uh, in 1998, there was this ruble crisis in uh, Russia. There were large Indian companies in Russia who decided at that point of time that, listen, you know, Maybe we would want to step back, see what is happening to the market, come back into this market. We were also a very small company at that point of time, and we kind of you know, had this hurdle with uh, our chairman, our founding chairman, Dr. Reddy, uh, as to what we should be doing, because we were a small company, our money was stuck in Russia, and I did not see the possibility of getting it back because of huge devaluation. And the guidance I got from my chairman at that point of time, again, connected back to the purpose of why we exist as an organization is the customers are using our product, the doctors are prescribing, the pharmacists are ensuring availability of the product. It is okay, we will take the losses, but we will not move away from this market. The, com the companies that stepped back at that point of time could not re-enter or make the presence felt. This obviously helped us. We have gone from crisis to crisis in 1998, 2008, 2015, the current, um, I would say, the situation on the geopolitical aspect of Russia. But then the benefit that we got is we have been able to grow about 12 times in the last several years. Thank you. By, by working on con consistently building the brands, um, so every uh, every year or every two years, the, um, the, the research agencies, uh, they publish the 10 most important products that uh, the Russia, uh, Russian people, so it's basically the Russian people, the Russian doctors, the Russian pharmacists, pick up to say what are the 10 most important products. It's called Narodrin Preparat or People's Products, and Dr. Reddy's three brands stop in the top 10. So this has been a consistent way in which we have been building the business, but it is also about making the most. So one of the elements in terms of how to consistently grow in emerging markets is consistently make new moves. So we started off in Russia to be in the prescription business, got into institutions. From institutions, we started to get into OTC. From OTC, we started representing innovative companies with their innovative products, then started local manufacturing so that we are playing across the uh, all of the segments. And as a consequence to that, almost every product that today uh, we have in Russia, we are the number one brand leader across whether it is pain management, GI, uh, allergy, and then uh, as a consequence to that, almost 4% uh, of all prescriptions given, we are the number two largest uh, prescription uh, company in Russia. So almost 4% of all prescriptions that are today given in Russia uh, goes to Dr. Reddy's um, products. Uh, that's, that, that's my learning in the last three decades that if you want to be in the emerging market, then stay committed to emerging markets. Don't be opportunistic. If you're opportunistic, you'll not, you'll not be able to build a consistent business in the emerging markets. The second, I think, is uh, the story about uh, China. China, we entered uh, about uh, 24 years back uh, when China as a, as a market uh, was, you know, in the very early nascent stages. Uh, when I, I went to China, I saw that there were a couple of Indian companies who were ahead of us. But when I started to look at the business model, what I saw was 
they picked up exactly the same products that they were selling in India and tried to bring that into China. And where I saw the problem over there was you were competing with the Chinese companies in China with the same portfolio and they had better cost than you and they, knew, they understood the market better than you. And almost every Indian company which was doing the same exact business model as the Chinese companies lost to Chinese companies and had to withdraw from the market. So to begin with, I realized that I cannot win with exactly the same business model, but with no competitive advantage. So what we did was we took, when we started off for the first few years, we took no product from Dr. Reddy's to China and almost all the products was in license from other companies where the Chinese companies were not playing and we had an opportunity to address an unmet need. Our largest product today is one such product for gout and then the area of neurology and the cardiology. But then what also changed while we were building the size and then we continue to grow in China, the Chinese government made a change where they bought into important uh, legislation. Uh, the direction was very clear. There was a lo lot of Chinese companies where the quality standards uh, were not necessarily uh, uniformly established. So what the Chinese government wanted to do was to make two important uh, changes. One, they, you know, I think uh, the president of DMS, uh, IDMA spoke about the fact of value growth. Uh, the Chinese government decided that they're going to focus on creation of um, top 10 to 20 companies that will you know, focus on creation of value through innovation. And second, they wanted for their people very high quality, uh, uh, you know, uh, generics, which they considered something called a generic equivalent assessment, where every product that was registered in China had to go through generic equivalent assessment in order to participate in what one is known today as the general procurement or a GPO. And then we saw that opportunity. As a company, we have been focusing and building our portfolio in the US, and we still saw this opportunity that, okay, now we can take up portfolio. And of course, uh, what we need to also consider is, you cannot just take a US FDA approved product directly into China because there are certain nuances that, that, that are there as compared to what it will take to get an approval. But the fact that the experience and having the facilities that are approved for the US actually opens up many markets, um, including China. So we started to uh, then bring in our products through our rep office into uh, the, the GPO market. Um, in fact, uh, there are several of them. We were the first company, Indian company, to have uh, got the approval for the GEA in China, among the first generic companies, actually, to get a GEA approval among the first companies to have won a GPO in China. We have several approvals now. Uh, but I think what is important is that you need to assess what the local market really needs. Do you have the competitive advantages to play? And should you be able to do that, you end up having, of course, uh, several successes. And as a consequence to the fact that we modeled our business based on what the Chinese market needed and leveraged our capabilities. Today, uh, Dr. Eddy's is the largest international generic company in China. The third, I would say, is about playing to your spends. So while we were doing all of this, one of the uh, strategy that we thought would work is to say, okay, we cannot be in all of the emerging markets ourselves. So we would give a certain set of markets to multinational companies. They wanted to, at least one of the multinational company wanted to bring in good high quality generics along with their innovative products. So we gave Latin America, including Brazil to an MNC, hoping that they would be able to make this a success. But later we realized that that did not work out because it's always difficult for a multinational company to prioritize the value that they can generate from their innovative products versus selling billions of pills in the, in, in the generic space. So that didn't work out. But we wanted to get into Brazil. And here it was very, very clear that Brazil has two markets. One is the retail market and the other in institution market. We were late for the retail market. Organically, we understood we would not be able to 
try to get into the Brazil market. There were companies like Torrent, which established a very strong presence in the retail market. There were companies like uh, Sun Pharma. There were companies like uh, Cadilla and Lupin, who have their presence on the retail side. Some of them came in through the inorganic. So it was very clear, inorganic, we would not succeed. But then what we realized is, what is the strength that we had? So there was this large oncology institutional market, and we had a significant number of products that we were uh, selling into the US. We had US quality dossiers, and there is a strong, uh, um, I would say, regulatory to regulatory conversation and uh, collaboration that happens between Anvisa and the US FDA. And if you have a US FDA approved plant and you have US FDA approved dossier, you have a higher probability to succeed. So we decided that we will only focus on oncology business and then get into the institutional business, leveraging our dossiers and our capabilities, but more importantly, continuing to build on our strength, which is to build the sales and marketing uh, capability. So as compared to most institutional markets, uh, Brazil has about 400 oncology clinics and you need to enter clinic by clinic and it is a branded oncology play in that sense. It's a branded generic oncology play. And that's how in the last couple of years, we have been able to bring in um, our products into Brazil and continue to build the brands in Brazil too, where we are within the top and, and a leading oncology generic company. This is something that we built in the last uh, uh, seven years. We today offer the products for about 16 oncology types uh, to Brazil. Um, and then we have been recognized for the last two years um, as a uh, company um, that has done that, that's done well in Brazil. I think this part about operating model is extremely important. Uh, the way to think about this is you need to you need to be clear how do you want to play this. Um, a, you could decide that I would want to play by leveraging the current uh, portfolio that I have for US and Europe. But you would want, while you want to do that, you need to also have clarity on how to get approvals in Southeast Asia as different from Latin America, as different from China, is different from the rest of the market. So the regulatory expertise that you need to build, you need to further build the regulatory expertise in your domains you need to then look at the portfolio that is meaningful in that particular market. And one thing that works for us in US and Europe, it also works in emerging markets is, if you want to make meaningful impact, you have to be first to the market. So first to the market, whether it's a generic or a differentiated product, makes the biggest impact as far as market share is concerned. And at least for us, when we take a product into emerging markets, if you're the first to launch, we get about 40% market share. If you're not first to launch, we very rarely went beyond 15 to 18%. So that's the difference between being in the market first or the second. Wherever there's a need, as in the case of uh, China, Russia, North Africa, there are several markets in which there is a need for you to locally manufacture, without which you cannot play in that market. So how do we you know, manage these manufacturing facilities outside of India? And what we have consistently done, we understand that today having presence and the endowment in all of these markets, we can leverage that endowment by working with other companies and we don't have to build all the capabilities by ourselves. So we work with a lot of Indian companies, we leverage their portfolio into emerging markets and we work with a lot of international uh, innovative companies as well. We represent PNG, we represent several other uh, companies uh, in the emerging market. So that's something that we have done. What I think is important is, um, in terms of creating a perception, it is absolutely essential that we need to create. So it is just not about quality, it's about consistency of supply. So if you're able to bring that consistency of supply, especially if you're on the institutional market, it makes a big difference uh, to, uh, to, 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 to the way in which the, you are perceived. And the last but not the least, and I'll come to that in the later part, the success in the emerging markets, when we started off, we were sending in a lot of expats to these markets. Uh, but as we built in 
the perception about us within those markets became evident and today uh, less than 0.5 percent of the total workforce we have in emerging markets are expats uh, almost all of them are locals that we have been able to build we have about close to uh, today within Dr. Eddy's more than 50 different nationalities uh, who work uh, with, within the organization. Your ability to understand how to work within the different geographies and understand and adapt to their cultures become like, extremely important um, as well. So when it comes to the um, talent and to build a culture, so we have a very clear behavioral expectation of if you are part of uh, an employee in Dr. Eddy's, doesn't matter whether you're in China, whether you're in Russia, whether you're in US or in Europe. And we bring this expectation very clearly uh, or in terms of our teams. And whenever we do the conversation in terms of how to, how a person is doing within the organization, uh, it's always about not just about what you have achieved, but how have you achieved. And this is, this is extremely important because if you have local leadership and local talent which believes in you, which believes in your purpose of the organization, what they can do for you in the country and in, 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 in terms of the market, um, you would not be able to do it by sending the expats from here. So it's important uh, to actually go about uh, doing that. Uh, this is something that we feel good about, that over the years, we have been able to build uh, great places, the great culture across uh, several emerging markets. And today, it is because of the growth mindset. It is because of the way in which uh, uh, we're working on quality and the fact that today we have a large team of people who are working with, on the purpose of the organization that we do well uh, in emerging markets. So these are the five principles that have worked for us. It's always been a consistent learning. I cannot say if I come in present and have the opportunity, uh, Mr. Mayul will call, call us back to make a presentation five years from now. It will be the same five principles. This has been the journey for the last three decades. It's been uh, a very exciting phase. Um, and I wish uh, that more and more uh, companies from from India, get the opportunity to build your own presence, build your own brand, have your own journey. Uh, you don't have to do it everything yourself. There are a good number of local companies, Indian companies that are having presence. You could decide to partner, you could decide to uh, you know, do certain markets yourself. But I can tell you that still, as compared to where we are today, there is a need for high quality generic. There's a need for you to bring in differentiation there's a need to bring in innovation into these markets. And I'm sure like um, the president of IDMA was talking about uh, the opportunity and I think Mr. Mayor also spoke about the aspiration of Indian and Indian companies are going to grow. I'm sure you will and all of us will do well in emerging markets. Thank you for giving me the opportunity.